serious. You pollute me, sanctuary, when you bring a man in there, he is circumcised. Go ahead. Even my house, with, when he offered my bread, the fat and the blood, and they have broken my covenant because of all your abomination. This is the future right here. How I know? Because the Lord is there. Go ahead. And ye have not kept the charge of mine holy things, but ye have set keepers of my charge in my sanctuary for yourselves. You have not kept the charge. So we can't keep the charge now. How are we going to get in there? In the land to keep the charge this time? Stranger or not, this is the ordinance of the Passover. Be circumcised in the heart, which is the mind, and the body. Males. Go ahead. Verse 9. Thus said the Lord God, no stranger, uncircumcised in heart. Wait, wait, wait. Who's saying this? The Lord. Moses saying this? No, sir. It's the Lord. Joshua saying this? Mm -hmm. No. The Lord. Go ahead. Thus said the Lord God, no stranger, uncircumcised in heart, nor uncircumcised in flesh, shall enter into my sanctuary of any stranger that is among the children of Israel. So he's telling the strangers too. Don't bring your behind up in here. If you are circumcised, you were polluted. Go ahead. And the Levites that are gone away far from me, when Israel went astray, which went astray away from me after their idols, they shall even bear their iniquity. See, they went after them idols. They still going to be going after idols. We went after idols back then. Even in the thousand years, they're going to be going after some idols. Even in their mind. That's why in Zechariah chapter 14, he said they would, Egypt wouldn't even come up to keep the tabernacle, feast of the tabernacle, because they thought they wanted to do it they, their way. This is the ordinance. Go ahead. Verse 11. Yet they shall be ministers in my sanctuary. Now he's talking about the Levite. This is the Levite job, the priest job. They got to mark well. If you're a minister of God, you're preaching, you better mark your congregation well. Go ahead. Having charge at the gates of the house and ministering to the house. They shall slay the burnt offering and the sacrifice for the people, and they shall stand before them to minister unto them. Do you understand? Jesus said he would not keep the Passover until he keep it in his father's kingdom. Why? Because people still going to be sinning, even in the thousand years. That blood still got to cover them up. You still going to bring animal sacrifices. We're going to do it all over again the right way. Period. Go ahead. Verse 12. Because they ministered unto them before their idols and caused the house of Israel to fall into iniquity. Mm -hmm. Therefore have I lifted up my hand against them, saith the Lord God. The Lord lifted up his hand against them. Go ahead. And they shall bear their iniquity. We don't want to bear our iniquity, iniquities. We need to do as much as we can. Follow the instruction. So you won't have the little out of your mind like we doing something wrong. Go ahead. 13. And they shall not come near unto me to do the office of a priest unto me, nor to come near to any of my holy things in the most holy place. But they shall bear their shame and their abominations which they have committed. So if you are a preacher and you got a congregation, you better take note of this. Because you're going to ask for every soul that you tell yea to or nay to. You better take note of this. This is the ordinance of the Passover. Go ahead. 14. But I will make them keepers of the charge of the house for all the service thereof and for all that shall be done therein. They're the keepers. This is future right here. I can go to, go to, keep going to 45 and tell you. Matter of fact, go to 45. Isaiah 45. Let me show you. Ezekiel 45. Yeah, Ezekiel 45. Let me show you something here. We get back to the Passover. Ezekiel chapter 45, we're going to start with verse 8. Well, if we start with verse 1, we're going to go to 8. Let me show you. When we enter into the land, Israel is going to have their own spot of land. Verse 1, go ahead. Moreover, when you shall divide by lot the land for inheritance, you shall offer an oblation unto the Lord. What is an oblation? That's animal sacrifice. Go ahead. And the holy portion of the land. The length shall be the length of five and twenty thousand reeds, and the breadth shall be ten thousand. This shall be holy in all the borders thereof round about. So we got a border of land and we're going to offer a sacrifice. You're going to know what tribe you're from and he's going to give you a spot of land. And we're going to offer up 
come up with the, to the feast days and offer what we supposed to offer at this time. Pass over the feast of living bread, day of atonement, all the holidays. What we bring from the land, we got to offer at this time. Jump down to verse 8. Let me show you this future. Keep going. And the land shall be his possession in Israel. And my princes shall no more oppress my people. Wait, wait, wait. He said, my princes shall no more oppress my people. Are we still oppressed? Yeah. So this is future. Go ahead. And the rest of the land shall they give to the house of Israel according to their tribes. According to their tribe. We're going to give according to our tribe to the house of Israel. Go ahead. Thus said the Lord God, let it suffice you, O princes of Israel, remove violence and spoil, and execute judgment and justice. Take away your exactions from my people, said the Lord God. Because we got to do it righteous. We have to do it righteous. Jump down to verse 15. I ain't going to go into it all. Keep going. And one lamb out of the flock, out of 200, out of the fat pastures of Israel, for a meat offering and for a burnt offering and for peace offering. To make reconciliation for them, so, said the Lord God. So we still taking, we're going to be taking them up animal sacrifices in the land. This will thus say the Lord. Go ahead. All the people of the land shall give this oblation for the prince in Israel. Yes, sir. And it shall be the princess's part to give burnt offerings and meat offerings and drink offerings in the feast and in the new moons and in the Sabbaths and all solemn. Solemn, uh, solemn, 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 yeah, solemnity yeah. of the house of Israel. was a holy convocation. Go ahead. Of the house of Israel. Well, that's the first time we've had Kevin slip up. He used to slip up. Go ahead, bro. He shall prepare the sin offering and the meat offering and the burnt offering and the peace offerings to make reconciliation for the house of Israel. See, the priest got to make sure he mark him well. Because he have to give that offering up for reconciliation to recover Israel from their sins. We got to make sure we're doing it. Jump down to verse 21. Let's see if we're going to be keeping the Passover. Keep going. In the first month, in the 14th day of the month, you shall have the Passover, a feast of seven days. Unleavened bread shall be eaten. So we still keeping the Passover, yes, sir. Still keeping it. Zechariah chapter 14 tells we still going to be keeping tabernacle. All this run together. Let's go back to number chapter 9. I just want to make sure y'all equipped. Number chapter 9 and verse 1. Look at some more ordinance of the Passover. Because we just read in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. We still doing the Passover. I'm just showing you from the past to the future and up to now. This don't change. Number chapter 9 and verse 1. We you get it, brother? Go ahead. And the Lord spake unto Moses in the wilderness of Sinai, in the first month of the second year, after they were come out of the land of Egypt, saying, mm -hmm. Let the children of Israel also keep the Passover at his appointed season. Yes, sir. In the fourteenth day of this month, at even, ye shall keep it in its appointed season, according to all the rites of it, and according to all the ceremonies thereof, shall ye keep it. So we got to make sure we keep it correctly. Go ahead. And Moses spake unto the children of Israel that they should keep the Passover. Go ahead. And they kept the Passover on the 14th day of the first month at evening in the wilderness of Sinai, mm -hmm. according to all that the Lord commanded Moses. So did the children of Israel. So when they came out of the wilderness, they said, look, y'all get in the land, this is what I want you to take. Go ahead. And there were certain men who were defiled by the dead body of a man. Now we're going to see when you couldn't take the Passover. If you defiled by a dead person, go ahead. That they could not keep the Passover on that day. And they came before Moses and before Aaron on that day. There was defiled because they were around dead bodies. Go ahead. And those men said unto him, We are defiled by the dead body of a man. Wherefore are we kept back, that we may not offer an offering of the Lord in his appointed season among the children of Israel? See, they knew you couldn't be around a dead body. You 
See, in the law, if you touch a dead body, you don't clean for seven days. But if you're around a dead body, you don't clean to the evening. Amen. So when you are going on Passover, you got to make sure I ain't around no dead body. Or what? Keep going. And Moses said unto them, Stand still, and I will hear what the Lord will command concerning you. Go ahead. He's going to try to tell them what the Lord is going to do for you because you couldn't take it in the first month. Go ahead. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If any man of you or of your posterity shall be unclean by reason of a dead body, or be in a journey afar off, yet he shall keep the Passover unto the Lord. Go ahead. The fourteenth day of the second month at evening shall they keep it, and eat it with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. So if you defy by a dead body, or you in the distance where you couldn't get here, you do it again the second month. The second month. Because some people, one per, uh, it been one time it happened to me like that. Person, I had to get a pass over them in this 14th day of the second month. So this is the order. If you miss it the first time, you got to do over. That's all they're saying. You got to do over. If you with that, right? Verse 11? Yes. Okay. Let's go to Matthew chapter 26 in the New Testament. Passover. Don't y'all want to know what you're doing? I want to know what you're doing. This is the time when Jesus is going to tell his disciples he's going to die. He gave me so many instructions. Matthew 26 and verse 1. We just understand. Twenty twenty one Passover. Verse one, Matthew chapter twenty six, verse one. Go ahead. And it came to pass when Jesus had finished all these sayings, he said unto his disciples, "You know that after two days is the feast of Passover, and the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified." So he tell them he's gonna be crucified on Passover because what? Christ following the law. He gonna die on Passover. He's the sacrificial lamb. He's going to follow the law. The 14th day, this is the night he died. He said, do in remembrance of who? Me, which is Jesus. Jump down to verse 17. Go ahead. Now the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples came to pass. Mm, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Now the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying unto him, what wilt thou that we prepare for thee to eat the Passover? So he asked him, Jesus, what are we going to keep it? What he said? Go ahead. And he said, Go into the city to such a man, and say unto him, The master said, My time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at thy house with my disciples. He said, The master said. So why preach your son man got you in the house of the Lord keeping Passover? The master said this. Go ahead. And the disciples did, and Jesus had appointed them, and they made ready the Passover. So this is what we do. We do it as he appointed us on A B of the 14th 14 day. This is what he telling us to do. Go ahead. Now when the evening was come, he sat down with the with the twelve. Now this is what he did with the pastor. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 5 and 7. I just want to show you these are the ordinances. Even Christ following. Why ain't your pastor telling you to follow? 1 Corinthians chapter 5 and 7. Very important. Because Christ substituted his body for the Lamb. He's going to tell you right here. 1 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 7. Go ahead. Purge out therefore the old Lamb. That ye may be a new lump, as you are unleavened. For even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Christ our Passover. Jesus changed the ordinance right now. When the veil of the temple ripped out the bottom, yes, there was no need for you going to the temple and spread for seven times on the veil for the forgiveness of sin of the Levites that had to do it because he had to erase the animal sacrifices right then. Erase it. His blood is sufficient for all sins. Go ahead. Verse 8. Therefore let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. He said, let us keep what? The feast. Yeah. 
The feast, not with old leaven, meaning that we don't keep bread we got leaven in it. Or symbolically saying with sin, that's what unleavened bread means. You purging out the sin. You being real particular within that week and understanding that I don't need to be sinning. You don't need to be sinning, period, but you pay close attention to it by not eating bread. It's just symbolically for not eating bread that has yeast in it. Because sin gets inside our body, it's just like the yeast inside that bread. It puffs you up. It puff you up. Yes, sir. All that stuff. Read that again. Verse 8. Therefore let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Let me show you the benefits of keeping the feast of Passover. Let's go to 1 John chapter 2. Very beneficial. First John chapter two and one. I praise the Lord, man. I thank you, Jesus, for this night. Amen. For understanding. Amen. For understanding. Because I was lost. I was going straight to hell. And I thought I was going to the heavenly kingdom. Didn't understand I had to didn't understand I had to do all this. All I was doing in the Sunday church was leading Jesus Christ. And that was it. And I'm saying, no, no, it much more than this. I ain't going to fake the funk with you. I'm going to give it to you straight and no chaser. Let me show you the benefits of the Passover. And keeping all his days, this is the benefit. Verse 1, 1 John chapter 2 and verse 1. Go ahead. My little children, these things write I unto you, that you sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. See, we got an advocate. And you hear people out here all, all you hear people out here today telling you that in many ways to get to God. It's only one way. It's through Jesus. If you're not taking part of this fast Passover and keeping the ordinance of the Passover, you cannot get to the Father. He cannot go on your behalf and my behalf and say, Father, forgive Jeff for what he has done. He's the intercessor. It's the benefits of keeping the Passover. Go ahead. And he is the propitiation for our sins. He is the propitiation. He is the sacrifice for our sins. Go ahead. And not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Meaning that anybody come under the banner of this law in Israel, you can get your sins forgiven through Jesus' blood. Go ahead. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. So you telling me you know Jesus when you can't quote but three of the Ten Commandments? You can't even quote, quote six. You got to know them. Know them, rehearse them over and over and over again. Sometimes I just rehearse them in my mind, say them out loud every day or every other day. Or every I try to get them in. Because they slip by you a little bit if you ain't practicing. He said, do what? To show yourself a Study. 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 It's ongoing. Mm -hmm. It ain't like, oh, I got it. I'm I told a man this today, I said, I'm scared that I might miss the kingdom. I'm scared that I might miss the kingdom. I ain't never said I'm going, to, well, I did back in the day when I ain't know no better, but once I got came in the truth, I found out it was so much I didn't know and so much I wasn't doing. I don't get comfortable with this. Go ahead, brother, let me finish this. Verse 4, he that saith I know him and keepeth not his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. So if you don't know the commandments or keeping them, you a lie. I'm a lie. Go ahead. But whoso keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of God perfected. Yes, sir. Hereby know we that we are in him. We are in him when we keep these commandments. This is the love of God. Go ahead. He that said he abided in him himself also so to walk, even as he walked. So how do you get, how do you get to this uh, feast? To this Passover. You walk to your car, you drove over here. We pushed our way to get here. Some of us had a job. Some of us went far distance to get here. It, all people had to do something to get here to, the, to this night Amen. because it was very important. Go ahead. Verse 7. Brethren, I write no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment which you had from the beginning. 
The old commandment is the word which ye have heard from the beginning. He said, all right, no new commandment. All of it the same. Only thing difference, only difference is he changes up some prototypes of it. He changes up the ingredients. He substitutes. Instead of using baking soda, he might use uh, uh, yeast. Instead of not using yeast, he might use baking soda. Just like the feast of unleavened bread. We don't use yeast and bread because it substitutes, it symbolizes purging the sin. You finish with that? Yes, sir. Let's go to Ezekiel, I mean, Exodus chapter 12. You're a liar. If you ain't keeping this, I'm a liar if I ain't keeping this. Exodus chapter 12 and verse 7. I got ahead of myself. I read this already, but go ahead. <laughs> and they shall take up the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door posts of the houses wherein they shall eat it. I wonder why I left that out. I went ahead of myself. I put it did right then. But jump down to verse 12. This is why we do the Passover again. Go ahead. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. Mm -hmm. And against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute the judgment. I am the Lord. So like I said before, if you want to be covered from any disease, we're using coronavirus right now, get under this blood. And then if you get coronavirus, God will bring you through it. He will help you get through it. You know, it helped me and this brother get to it. A few other, uh, for a few other people here called it too, and they got through it. We still here. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 2. This is what passed over me. He's going to pass over you. Hebrews 2. Jesus trying to deliver us. Some people think didn't have this. Well, we do it, we do it now. This is very important. Each year I do it, I find out how, I find out each year it's more and more important to understand what we're doing. Amen. Hebrews chapter 2. We're going to start with verse 1. Because you can't let this stuff slip. You can't let it slip. Go ahead, brother. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. This is a one. This is a gut check. He said, we must give an earnest. Don't get so comfortable like, yeah, I know what I'm doing. I'm good. Yeah, I'm, I'm righteous. I know I'm going to make it. I ain't, I ain't going to say that. He said he didn't do it to win. To the end. Sure. Everybody have to endure it. And some of us said slip. I said us. Me too. If you slip, get back in line. Go ahead. Jump down to verse 14. 9. Go ahead. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. This is why Passover is so important. He died for us to taste death. Because if he didn't die, we were locked in that lake of fire forever. <clears throat> Jump down to verse 14. Go ahead. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is, the devil. Yes, sir. Through death so he can destroy who? The devil. The, devil. the power of God, the devil is so he's strong out here. Don't never think he ain't strong. <laughs> When the angels had to come and help Jesus through them 40 days before the night because the devil came and tempted him. You think if Jesus had to help there? What you think about us? The, the meaning that this flesh he had on was so unbearable to him a lot of times. He, got, he had the same type of temptation we had. Everything he had. He understands 
why he needed to come to die because we weren't strong enough to make it through the devil. Go ahead. 15. And deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. We were subject to bondage. This is what Christ done. Go ahead. For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. The seed of who? Abraham. Understand that Jesus came through the bloodline of Abraham, also through the bloodline of Israel, which is the heat from the tribe of Judah. Which are uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are the bearer of the covenants. So if you don't know who Israel is, Israel is you don't have an advantage. I don't have an advantage because they have the oracles, the answers. Go ahead. Wherefore in all things they behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. To make what? Reconciliation. He had to recover us through his blood. This is why Passover is so important. A God took on flesh and got on the cross and died and let his creation kill him. That's a humbling thing right there. Yes. Very humbling. Go ahead. 18. For in that he himself has suffered being tempted, he is able to secure, secure them that are, that are tempted. So I told you, he was tempted. He tempted just like all of us, but different between him and us, he didn't commit those sins. <laughs> we committed them more times than them. That's why he said, man, if I don't go on this cross and help this man, all of them are going to die. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. We got a choice here. We got a choice. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. In verse 19. You got a choice. You better choose right. Go ahead, brother. What say I then? That the idol is anything, or that which is offered in sacrifice to idols is anything? But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. I would not that you should have fellowship with devils. He said, look, I don't want, they sacrifice the Gentiles. Who are the Gentiles? The Europeans. The seed of Jaffa. What do they give us around this time of the year? Easter. Easter day, Easter bunnies, Easter dresses, Easter speeches, Easter, Easter, Easter dinner, lunches, whatever it is. They give it this stuff. They sacrifice it to devils. What did the Lord talk, tell us to do? Go ahead. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. He said, you can't drink this cup of mine, which is Passover, and take your behind over there and keep Easter. You can't do, do both. Go ahead. You cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. You can't come at the Lord's table or the feast of the bread and then go back over there to your mama now at Christmas, Easter, all them days that are pagan and say, oh, I'm with the Lord. Don't kid yourself. If you're going to be a sinner, be a good one. Ball to you fall. Because there's no in-between with God. Get it all in. You're going to be a fornicator, be the best fornicator you can. Get paid for it. But if you're going to be righteous, be the best righteous man or woman for it. And get paid for it. Which is giving, giving account for your salvation when your report card come up in the resurrection. How many times Jeff kept Passover? Did he stop at 99? No, he didn't stop. Let him in. But if he stopped at 98 and did it for 40 some years, all oh, that erased. We found that out about two or three lessons ago. It's all about a present time with God. You can do all these Passovers until you deal for 40 years and you stop at your death, yeah, he don't remember. That's tough. That's very really tough. I said, dog, I gotta get this thing to the end for real. Go ahead. 22. Go ahead, yeah. Do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? Mm -hmm. All things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but all things edify not. He said, all things are lawful to him. 
But anyway, you go out there and feed somebody and say, 